Well, amen. God bless you. We welcome you to Mount Zion on a Sunday morning. How about you get on your feet and give God praise if you're happy to be in the house of God? Come on, I know you can be, do a better job than that. God's been good to you. Blessed us all with another day. Amen, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. We welcome you to Mount Zion uh, on a Sunday morning. It's good to see you. Glad that you came to worship with us. How about you just do this? Can you just look at your neighbors and greet your neighbors? Give them a wave and let them know that you're happy to see them in the house of God on a Sunday morning. Bless someone this morning. Bless someone this morning. Well, amen, amen, amen. Well, how many of you know that you are a miracle? You are a walking miracle. You are a walking miracle. There's a scripture that I love that I want to share with you as we get started in worship today that says, my enemies will retreat when I call to you for help. My enemies will retreat. They'll run away when I call to you for help. Are you believing for something that you need? I'm grateful that I can look over my life and see times when I've needed something with my health, with my career, with my family, and God has delivered for me. And I can tell you, if he did it before, come on, if he did it before, if he did it before, he can do it again. And sometimes we can get discouraged in life and we get sad and, you know, we may be facing a new battle that we never faced before. And, you know, sometimes it may creep into our minds that, well, this is it. This is going to be the thing that takes me down and takes me out. But that's why I'm glad that I got Mount Zion on a Sunday morning. <laughs> that's why I'm glad that I could come into the house of God and worship him because it reminds me of all the great things that God has done in my life. And I show up and I'm grateful and thankful to him knowing that God's not done. And that's my word for you today. God's not done. He has so much more. He has so much more. So today, worship God. Praise him. Know that God has a plan for your life. Know that God is working miracles even as you worship right now. When the praises go up, the blessings do come down. And that God is going before you. He's making your crooked places straight. And he's got some great things in store for you this week. How many received that word on early Sunday morning? Well, amen. Well, we have the greatest praise team in the entire world. Why don't you give God praise for our praise team as they lead us this morning? Come on, give God praise all around us.
The devil tries to steal your joy. Hold on. Hold on. The enemy tries to take your peace of mind. Hold on. Grab hold to your faith and hold on. Hold on. And no, God will bring you out. Hold on. Hold on. You. Yeah. And my sister, you can. 
stand on your feet? The question is asked, why do you have to hold on? Yeah, 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 yeah. The question may be asked, how is it that I hold on? It's found in the text. It's found in Philippians 4.13. I want you to repeat after me. Say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so that gives you the ability to hold on. Because God can do what no other power on earth can do. Is there anybody in this place where you just had to hold on just a little while longer? I want you to do me a favor and just come to the altar right now. I believe we have to hold on to God even in a time like this. We need to hold on to his promises. Hold on to the fact that God is a healer. And hold on to the fact that God is a deliverer. I believe that God wants to fill you up. He wants to fill your spirit. He wants to fill your soul. When you come into God's house, I believe that he wants to do something in your life. You know, today is a special Sunday. We're celebrating survivors. Somebody say survivors. Are there any survivors in the house? Just raise your hand. Maybe you survived cancer. If I got a cancer survivor, say hallelujah. There's some survivors in the house, and we're going to recognize our cancer ministry even at our 11 a.m. service. But today we just want to celebrate survivors. Maybe you survived a tragedy. Maybe you survived an accident. Maybe you survived something from your childhood. I want to tell you, God brought you through it. And for that, somebody ought to say thank you. For that, somebody ought to say hallelujah. For that, somebody ought to say, Lord, you're good. So I want you to do me a favor. I want you to bow your, your heads right now. And I want you to just talk to God in your own special way. I want you to just lean on the Lord right now. Because we need to know that whatever you face, whatever challenge it may be, I want you to remember that God made you to be resilient. God made you to be resilient. Somebody say this word, resilient. That means he wants you to be able to hold on to hope. Because hope is your ally through the storms of life. Let me minister to you for a moment. I want to minister to somebody and inspire somebody right now. And I want you to remember that each day is not a step backward. But I want you to know that each day is a step forward. It's a step forward. It's a step forward to your healing. And remember, you don't have to walk this path alone. If you're here in this church, there's witnesses here today. There's people right now in this place that will pray for you, even right now. And I want you to just start praying for your neighbors. I want you to just start praying for them right now. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what journey they've been through. But all you know is that because they're standing today, it's because God delivered them from something. And I believe God will deliver them even as they continue to walk. So I encourage you today to also walk in courage. Can somebody say the word courage? All you got to do is take it one day at a time. Know that each small victory in your life matters. That's why we celebrate survivors today. Don't live this life troubled. Because if you believe in Jesus, remember, he has overcome the world. He's overcome everything you can go through. He's overcome your sickness. He's overcome your pain. He's overcome your setback. So you can have a praise in your spirit. You can say glory to the Lord. You can say thank you, God. You can lift up your voices. You can worship freely today because he has overcome the world. Pray right now and again for your neighbors. Pray for those on our sick and shut-in list. Pray for our pastor and first lady. Pray for his strength and pray for his continued health and pray that God continues to intercede. We just celebrated 44 years of amazing ministry. So I pray that God will continue to undergird him even on today. Pray for me. Pray for my brother. Pray for the first family. Pray for the leaders of this church. Pray for all of the ministry members, all of the leaders, all of the people that volunteer, that give up their time, of their talent and their treasure. Pray that God blesses them today as we worship the Lord in this moment of prayer. Pray to God and talk to him right now. And I believe that he hears you even right now. And as our choir comes, let us talk to God and feel his spirit in this place. Provide the fire I'll 
provide the sacrifice. If you provide the spirit. Yes. I will open up inside. Yes, let's worship him today. If you provide the fire. Then I will open up inside, so fill me up, God, fill me up, God, fill me up, God, fill me up, so fill me up, God, fill me up, God, fill me up, God, fill me so fill me up until I overflow. God, your Bible says in Isaiah 41 10, do not fear for I am with you. The Bible says, do not be dismayed for I am your God. It says, I will strengthen you and I will help you. The Bible says, I will uphold you with my righteous hand. The Bible God, the Bible also says in Psalms 30 verse 2, it says this, it says, oh Lord my God, I call to you for help. And the good news is, the Bible goes on to say, and you healed me. Right now, I'm going to ask that Pastor Dan will come and just pray over us with a prayer of healing, with a prayer of deliverance, even on today. Thank God for all of our survivors in the audience today. Amen. Give God praise for our survivors. We pray in the name that is above all names. Lord, we know that there are many things that we deal with here on earth that have names Father Lord cancer has a name but we pray to you which is the name that is above all names all sickness all disease Father Lord we thank you Father for all of our survivors that are here amongst us today they are living witnesses Lord that you are a great God you are a healing God and God that you are with us Father Lord there are people that are here today, Lord, that are dealing with all sorts of things, Lord, dealing with illness, dealing with sickness, Lord, dealing with something of the mind, Father, Lord. Maybe it's someone here today that's dealing with depression, Lord, or something else. Only you know, Father, Lord, what people are struggling with and face. But, Lord, as the song says, Lord, we pray, Lord, and we ask that you fill us up, Father, Lord. Fill us up, Father, Lord. Fill us with your joy, Lord. Fill us with your, with your peace, Father, Lord. Fill us with your word, Father, Lord. Fill us with only the joy and the peace and the gladness, Lord, and the healing, Lord, that comes from you, that comes from the heavens, Lord. We said it in the song today, hold on, Father, Lord. And holding on means that we hold on by faith, Father, Lord. So I pray, Lord, that for the people of God that are here today and the sound of my voice last, that their faith may rise up, Lord, and their doubt may go out. 
knowing that they may be dealing with some things right now, but it's on your timing, Father Lord. So I pray, Lord, that you keep them strong in the meantime, Lord. Help them hold on, Lord, till that miracle comes, Lord. But I pray, Lord, that their faith rises up to know that the miracle is on the way, Father Lord. That the healing is on the way, Lord. That the promotion is on the way, Lord. That the change is on the way, Father. We place our hope in you, Lord, and I just pray for strength for the people of God today, Lord. Hear our prayers, hear our cries, Lord, today, Lord. We lift you up and thank you, Lord, and we celebrate and praise you in advance, knowing that you will deliver, Father, Lord, that you will come through, and that you are a good God, Lord. We pray and believe these things in your precious name. Let all the faithful people of God say, amen, 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 and give God praise all around the sanctuary. Pastor Larry, and I want to welcome you to year two of Mount Zion University. So I'm excited about what we're doing, and I'm excited about your future growth as you study God's Word. Things will be revealed to you, and I promise you, it will bless your life. So make sure that you're registered. And of course, if you've got any questions, feel free to call the church, and our Mount Zion University staff will assist you. Let's continue the journey together. Take care, and God bless you, and thanks for enrolling. Hey everyone, this fall and winter, make sure to bring your kids and youth to church. Our Next Generation Ministry Team is getting ready for our Fall Fest at the Dream Center. We're going to give you a fun alternative to Halloween. On Sunday, October 27th, all the kids are invited to wear their costumes and come to church. They'll get candy and Rick Smith Jr., the master entertainer who's even been on The Tonight Show, will be there live. Join us. Do you know we have a ministry to the nursing homes? We are always looking for people to join this ministry and do nursing home visits. We pray, we support, we sing, and we bless. You can help today by submitting a card of encouragement. Bring in a card and write a special note and drop it off at the Connect Desk. forget I got a little tired I had this moment of, of inflection I'm saying wow here I am in the middle of the Detroit River and now I'm reflecting that I have a cancer diagnosis but I, I don't know what I'm gonna do I mean I was training for what was going to be my first triathlon and then the news came and so I said well here I am now <laughs> at 62 and I said, I'm diagnosed with colon cancer. So the competition was on that Sunday of the same week. 
I've invested too much time and energy to stop in this race. And I transferred that that discipline, that, that, that focus into my cancer recovery because I know there are a lot of people who have received this diagnosis who didn't make it. But guess what? I'm not going to let this cancer diagnosis stop me. I had faith in God, and I was going to leverage my faith to fight this battle. I feel so inspired to be an advocate in the community, particularly among African-American men, and being an advocate of what it means to be a cancer survivor, early detection, and being surrounded by a great team of doctors who, to help you cross the finish line. I just want to give you a huge shout out on the finish line. I want to thank everyone for standing with me, believing, dreaming, envisioning the potential that we bring in this life. I think everybody is impacted in one way or another with somebody with cancer. So I think it's important to keep telling the stories so people can understand that screenings, and I keep going back to that, screenings are important. They called and said, um, the doctor would like to see you. I got to the doctor that afternoon and she walks in and she says, well, how are you today? I remember vividly. And I said, I don't know, you tell me. And she said, we found a tumor on your right breast, and it is cancer. And I remember my son looking at me and grabbing my face, kissing my cheek and the top of my bald head. He says, Mom, you look beautiful. That family connection was everything to me. It was an amazing time to help me understand we need people to survive, and I had that. Wherever I go, I tell my story of breast cancer. I tell my story of how the journey was, how tough it was, how I've survived, and now my mission is to help you survive by getting your screenings, by taking care of yourself. Since I've had breast cancer, I have found in my own community a lot of African-American women who have never had a mammogram, who don't feel it's a need because they have the mindset I had that it doesn't run in my family, so I don't need to do it. It's important. If you want to live here, it's our job to help each other. It's my job to help you because I've gone through it. That's my mission. At Mount Zion, our mission is clear, to ensure that individuals are safe, saved, healthy, and most importantly, healed. We believe that healing begins with prayer and the Word of God. With a steadfast faith, we stand against the epidemic that our world faces, cancer. We are confident that God has the power to heal those battling this disease, and we aim to uplift and celebrate the courage of all survivors among us. We invite you to join us on Sunday, October 20th, for Survivor Sunday, a day dedicated to honoring and supporting those who have faced cancer. Whether you have journeyed personally through this challenge or know someone who has, let us come together to raise our voice in prayer for a cure and more importantly, for divine healing. We will shine a spotlight on our breast cancer survivors ministry. Through their stories of hope and resilience, we are reminded of the strength of community and the unyielding power of faith. Come and be a part of this uplifting experience as we celebrate the triumphs and the unwavering spirits of survivors. Together, let us nurture hope and healing through our collective faith and support. We look forward to seeing you there, embracing our shared mission with love and strength.
Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all of our survivors in the house that we're going to celebrate on today. Amen. Will you stand on your feet today and stand at the attention of God and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12 as we prepare ourselves to give to God and thank God for all that is done. Who here today is just a living miracle? Just say amen. You all are living miracles. No matter what you've been through, God has helped you to survive. And so we celebrate you even on this Sunday morning. So again, we're going to celebrate even our cancer ministry. They're going to be here at our 11 a.m. service. And even for all of our survivors, we have a special treat that will be in the foyer for you just to let you know that we want to encourage you and that we love you and that we believe in your healing on today. If you believe in the healing of God, just say amen. Amen, amen. Let's go into this text in Malachi 3, 6 through 12. I'm going to ask all of those even that are watching us online to participate in giving. We need the faithful people of God to continue to give so that we can do more in this ministry, so that we can continue to do God's work, so we can continue to spread the word of God. But also, this is a time where I need you to make sure that you are sowing. This is a time near the end of the year that we should always sow into God's house, knowing and believing what we want God to do in the next year. It starts right now. It starts today. And so I want you to start thinking about what is it that you may sow if it's something extra or even if you need to catch up. Maybe you haven't been giving like you normally would give or maybe you've fallen behind. This is a great time at the end of the year to catch up and make sure that you're giving to God and that you're blessing God so that God can also in turn bless you. But also we should also be in obedience to God. Somebody say the word obedience. We believe that obedience not only is something that you just need to do, but it also brings blessings to your life. And so I believe if there's something that you need, it starts with your obedience to God. So let's read this text in Malachi 3, 6 through 12. The Bible says this. It says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say... Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, thinking unto God. Thanking God for all that he's done for you, all that he's given to you in your life. Know today a great text to always remember is, is Proverbs chapter 3, 9 through 10. In that text, if I can talk to you for a moment, King Solomon, he's speaking to us. And he was one of the most honored men to ever walk this earth. And so the Lord granted him superior wisdom and knowledge. And so many people respected King Solomon. And Solomon knew a thing or two about honor. And knowing that, we see that he wrote in Proverbs 3 where the Bible says this. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your possessions. Then he says, and with the first fruits, say first fruits, of all of your increase, so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. See, in this text, when we read it, it talks about that we should give the Lord our act of honor through our giving, but it's also a way of thanking God for all that he has provided in our lives. You know, the truth of the matter is he supplies all of our needs by his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And the least we can do is honor him with the first fruits of our increase. But see, that's not the end of the verse. The verse goes on to say, the Lord says this. He says, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now here's the lesson that I want to give you today. Here's the amazing part. If you honor God with your finances and stay faithful to him, he'll bless you financially until your vats overflow, until your basket, until what all you have to carry it in will overflow. 
So let's honor God this morning and give to his kingdom. And so let's pray to God and talk to him right now. The Bible says this. Uh, the Bible talks about, again, honor the Lord today. Heavenly Father, we come to you today to honor you and to honor your house. We know today as we give, it doesn't go overlooked. We know you're watching us even right now in every moment of this worship. And so we ask today that we would bless us as we present our tithe and offerings to you. And we know that this is a gift. This is a sacrifice that we are making for you. And we believe that you will bless us for this gift and bless us for this sacrifice. We believe, God, that we stand on your word and we act in faith today. Bless the giver in a mighty and powerful way. As we raise our offering, our tithe and offering in the air, if you're giving God, giving to God today, raise your hand right now. Heavenly Father, we bless the giver in a mighty and powerful way. Touch their life, touch their situation. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are giving a tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets. All of those that are giving right now, you can come right now to the tithe and offering basket. and just greet about two or three people just for a moment in the sanctuary. Just greet somebody all around the building. Just tell them it's good to see them. Give them a smile. You might be the first smile that they've seen all week. You might be the first handshake, the first person to acknowledge them today. Just say, how you doing to your neighbor on today? Amen, amen. If you have a Bible with you, amen, amen. If you got a Bible with you, can you turn it to the book of Jeremiah? The book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 29, Jeremiah chapter 29, and I'm going to begin in verse 4 through 14, Jeremiah chapter 29, 4 
through 14. And I'm going to give you a moment to get that today. Do I have any blessed people in the house? Just say amen. If God's been good to you, say hallelujah. If God's healed your life, say God heal me. If God is still working on you, say he's not finished with me yet. Amen. That's what I want to hear today. God is not finished with me yet. Jeremiah chapter 29, 4 through 14. I'm going to read, and I'd love if you would follow, even in any translation that you're in. We should all be on the same page. The Bible says this. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all. It says to those that I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. He says, build houses and settle down. Somebody say, settle down. The Bible says, plant gardens and eat what they produce. It says, marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. The Bible says, increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also seek peace and prosperity. Pre seek priests and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. The Bible says pray to the Lord for it because it prospers. Because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Verse 8 says, yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and the dividers among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. It says they all prophesy lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to you to bring you back to this place. Here's verse 11. I want you to remember this text. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope. Somebody say hope plans to give you hope and, and a future. Verse 12 says, then you will call on me and come and pray to me. And here's the good news. The Bible says, I will listen. Verse 13 says, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. 14 says, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord. And I will do what? It says, I will bring you back to the place for which I carried you into exile. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearer and the reader of his word. Will you do me a favor? Will you bow your heads? Will you bow your heads and focus on the Lord? There's something that he wants to put into your mind, your body, and your soul. He wants to make a deposit. He wants to deposit his spirit into you right now. He wants to de deposit motivation into you. He wants to deposit inspiration in your soul. He wants to give you hope. He wants to give you joy. He wants to give you peace. But you've got to be receptive to the voice of the Lord. So we pray today right now, Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We lift you up. I pray right now as I preach and teach your word, God, that you would hide me behind your cross. I pray that we hear a word from you, Father. Speak into our spirit right now. We love you. We magnify you. We praise your name. And we lift you up higher and higher. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's followers said, amen and amen. Today, I want to just take a quick moment to preach a word to you from the subject of one day you will be delivered. One day, somebody say, one day, I am going to be delivered. Here in the text, Jeremiah, as we just read this text, is writing a letter to people who are headed into exile. Somebody say the word exile. When you study the word exile, it means a forced absence from your country or a forced absence from your home. Now, a forced absence from your place of origin or maybe a forced a forced absent from your place of comfort. A person who is basically exiled is, is displaced, if you will. They have been forced to move to what we want to call a foreign nation, a foreign nation. They have been forced to move to a foreign situation. And here in the text, 
I am moved by the words of Jeremiah the prophet. I am moved by him today, who by the authority that was given to him by God, he was given the authority to inspire, to instruct, and he was given the authority to motivate. He's telling the people of Israel what I want you to know today. He's saying, yes, that you have sinned against God. He's saying, yes, you've done some things wrong. And he said, it's going to be some difficult times ahead. He's saying this to the people, but he says, however, I'm not here to focus on the judgment. I'm not here to focus on what went wrong. I want to affirm to you today that in the midst of your wrong, in the midst of your setbacks, God is still going to be there for you. In the midst of your difficulty, this is what he's trying to say, God is still going to be faithful. So you can do one of two things is what this prophet is saying. He says, you could either sulk in your sorrow or you can cling to the hope that God can bring to your situation. Now, I don't know who needed to hear this, but I want to tell you, God can bring hope to your situation. And yes, you can be put in some uncomfortable positions at times. Yes, you're going to go through some storms. And, but Jeremiah says there's some things you got to do when you find yourself in these type of positions. And, and, and the Bible tells us that, that even though your plans may have changed, God's plan is still intact. And see, that's the good news that I want to tell you today. God's plans are still intact. And that's ultimately how you can navigate this thing called life. You've got to navigate realizing that God's ways are higher than our ways. And his ways may be different, but the good news is, is that God still has a plan. And so when you think about this, one of the worst situations to find yourself involved in uh, is, is to be in a situation where there is no plan. You know, I remember the first time I was on a cruise, I was a little worried. I was worried. The first time I went on a cruise, anybody ever been on a cruise, just say amen. amen. So if you're on a cruise, you get on this massive ship. And you sail out in the middle of the ocean with thousands of strangers, if you will, and there, there's many things that can go wrong. And, and, and someone can, you know, think about it when you're on a cruise, somebody could commit a crime on the ship and it's not like you can escape. You always on that ship. You could get sick on that ship. The ship could have engine trouble. The ship could, could get caught in a storm, if you will. Now, now many people don't think about these things. They, they get on there, and they're just having a good time, and they're having a party. But there are realities that can happen on that ship. So I remember my first cruise, and I was a little worried. And so while everybody was having fun, I was a little concerned about what could go wrong. I was thinking about all the possibilities, and so I was, I was lucky to be able to uh, participate in what, uh, what they call a behind-the-scenes tour of the ship. And on the tour, we were lucky to hang out with, with this person, and his, he was called the cruise director. Anybody know about the cruise director? And his job was to work with all the passengers, and his job was to make sure that everybody had a good time. And everybody was having fun. And I, I'll never forget my time with the cruise director. We, we became like best friends on the ship. And we even got to meet the captain. And for every concern that I mentioned above, every fear that I could bring up, and every uh, thing about safety or about security or about health, every challenge that I could foresee on the ship, to everything that we could possibly go through, the captain and the cruise director said, Larry, you don't have to worry worry about any of that because we have a plan he said we've got security on the ship we've got lifeboats on the ship we've got emergency equipment on the ship he said we even have a hospital on the ship and he said anything you need for anything that would come up in your situation we have a plan to address it and see that's just how God wants you to realize in your own life he wants you to realize and he wants you to know that for every contingency, every struggle that you go through, every heartache, every pain that you go through, the good news is, is that God has a plan for it. Isn't it good to know that you may have a problem, but God has a plan? Can somebody give God some praise that he's got a plan for your situation? See, that's why it's good to know that even when your plan 
even when your plan for yourself fails, that doesn't mean that God's plans for you has failed. See, that's what you got to believe in your life because if you can be honest this morning, life is a series of failed plans. Now, some of our plans that, uh, uh, that we uh, uh, put together, but at the end of the day, they are a series of failed plans. Life can really place you in some uncomfortable situations. Life can throw things at you that are involuntary. Life can throw things at you that would change your trajectory and change your, 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 the direction that you're going. But the text says, the prophet Jeremiah, who's speaking to the ex exiles, he's speaking to us. He says, in the midst of your exile." He said, in the midst of your involuntary setbacks, there are things that you've got to do. He says, that will help you make it no matter where you end up. Here's the good news. No matter where, no matter what circumstance you find yourself in. Does anybody hear me today? Say amen. So in Proverbs 3, 4 through 7, I want you to remember this text in 4 through 7. And I'm going to put that on the screen. It says, this is what the Lord Almighty, that's the next slide, the God of Israel, says to all those who I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. He says, build houses and settle down. He says, plant gardens and eat what they produce. He said, marry and have sons and daughters. He says, find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage. He says, so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. It says, do not decrease. It says also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. He says pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Now what is he saying? Well, he's given us our first tip when we find difficulties in our life. And see, here it is. When you find yourself in exile, number one, what you've got to do, and we can put that on the screen, be productive no matter what you're going through. Be productive in the midst of your predicament. You got to keep on living even in adverse situations. Don't be weary in well-doing. To all the ladies, keep getting your hair did. Keep getting dressed in the morning. Keep looking for uh, that special someone. To everybody here today, keep going to work every single day. Keep praying for that wayward loved one. Don't give up hope on your spouse. Put a smile on your face even when life is getting you down. Because the conventional thing people do, here's, here it is. The conventional thing that people do when they get in the place that they, that they don't want to be, in seasons that they don't ask for, they tend to throw up their hands. They tend to give up and get in. And see, they don't throw up their hands in praise, but they throw up their hands and they quit. They give up and they give in. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says don't just lay down because you're not in the environment that you want to be in. See, the demand in the word of God is that you must increase even while you're in exile. You must increase even when things aren't going your way. Now, the question is asked, how do I increase while I'm in exile? I said it early. You got to keep doing what's right. See, my daddy used to always tell me that you can't go wrong doing right. You got to stop living for today and start living for tomorrow. The Bible says we ought to be sober-minded. Now, sober doesn't mean solemn, sad, and bored. It basically means don't be under the influence. You've got to be in full possession of your senses, not controlled by the outside forces. You've got to be able to think clearly and to act clearly. And the only thing that will keep the people of God sober-minded is the Word of God. And see, that's why we got to act on his word and not just listen to his word. Because the Bible says it's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so Jeremiah said, keep doing what successful people do. He said, build houses. He said, build family. He said, plant gardens. He said, pray. He says, be proactive and put God behind your work. 
He said, undergird it with prayer. And he said, and watch what God will do with it. It says he'll prosper it. He'll prosper everything that you touch in his name. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God will prosper everything that you touch in his name. No matter what you're going through, I believe that you will prosper. So the first thing you got to do while you're in exile is you've got to be productive in the midst of your predicament. Now, Jeremiah, he unpacks many things. I want you to read chapter 29 on your own time. Uh, on, on your own time, you got to do that. He talks about praying for your persecutors. Anybody got some persecutors in the house? I'm going to put it this way. Anybody got some haters in the house? Say amen. He talks about protecting yourself from haters and false prophets. And, and I'll hit on that a little bit. You got you to gotta watch who you talk to. You got to watch who you tell what you're going through. You can't tell everybody your business. You can't tell everybody what you're going through. False prophets, false prophets. They, that's, what, that's why you got to listen to a prayerful source. See, the people you go to, you better make sure that they are right with God. You got to make sure who you talk to uh, uh, knows the Lord. And see, prayerful sources don't communicate through social media. Prayerful sources don't dibble and dabble and guess what I heard and check this out type of statements. Prayerful sources don't use violence and fear to scare you. They don't hide behind anonymity. See, a prayerful source is a helpful ear and a helpful voice. See, a good person to go through exile is one with a, a, a one who will share with you what they think and, and what they feel about what you're going through. But then after they've given their advice, they let it rest with you and the Lord to figure it out. Let me say that one more time. A good person to go through exile with is somebody that will hear you out that will give you good advice, but then they'll let you and the Lord take care of it from there. And see, the re reason many people have a challenge in finding a prayerful source or discerning who they can trust and who they can't trust is because they are distant from God. See, when you're distant from God, you'll fall for anything anybody says. See, all they got to do is put God told me this in their speech and all of a sudden you're going to believe it. But when you're connected to God in prayer, when you're connected to God and you're communicating with the Lord, when you're reading his word, he gives you the gift of discernment amongst people. So Jeremiah says, watch out for the haters. Watch out for the false prophet. But lastly, in the midst of exile, in the midst of your difficulty, you got to be patient with the plan. Somebody say, be patient with the plan. Now, as I said earlier, don't give up. Don't stop believing that God has a plan for you. But here's verse 11. I'm going to put it on the screen. It says this. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. He said, I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you. He says, plans to give you hope and a future he says then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you he says you will seek me and you will find me he says when you seek me with all your heart I'll be found found by you declares the Lord he says I will bring you back from captivity he says I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you declares the Lord and I will bring you back to the places in which I carried you into exile let me say this in the message version of the text here's another interpretation he says this is God's word on the subject as soon as Babylon 70 years are up and not a day before I'll show up and I'll take care of you as I promise and I'll bring you back home I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you future. Plans to give you the future that you hope for. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. When you come looking for me, the Bible says you'll find me. I don't know who needed to hear that today, but the Lord told me to tell you. The Lord told me to give you the message that no matter how bad it seems, I've got a plan. No matter how dark it looks, I got a 
plan no matter how bad they talk about you I've got a plan no matter what the news is I got a plan no matter how hard it seems I've got a plan we serve a God that has a plan for us and when you're waiting on his plan to come to pass in your life I want you to remember this phrase one of my favorite phrases it says it came to pass I want to tell you today it didn't come to stay it came to pass your problem came to pass it didn't come to stay your weariness came to pass it didn't come to stay your sickness came to pass it didn't come to stay somebody needs to stand up and believe in God that it didn't come to stay that it came to pass is there anybody in this house that knows that what you go through is not your portion always trouble won't last always my challenge won't last always my peril won't last always do you believe the word of God today if you believe it today give God some praise in this place it came to pass it came to pass tell your neighbor say it came to pass as we remain standing today it came to pass not to stay one of the major things today is that it's hope for the future one thing that you must always hold on to is that four letter word we call hope the bible says for i know the plans that i have for you god assures his people that despite their current trials, despite their current circumstances, he has a plan to prosper them. So no matter what your dire circumstances may be, I want to tell you that God wants to bring you hope and God wants to bring you a future in your life. A future in your life. I want you to think about it this way. If anybody has ever seen a tapestry, we can put that on the screen, a tapestry. It's like a woven piece of carpet. If you look at the back of a tapestry, as you see on the screen, if you look at the underside of it, all you see is a bunch of thread kind of hanging out. You can a little bit kind of see what it is, but at the end of the day, you can't really tell what it is. However, if you go to the next slide, when you flip it over, what you'll see on that tapestry is a beautiful image. And on that image, it's, it's crafted for that very very thread that's on the other side but here let's let's do this on the next slide I want you to look at the back side and the front slide now if you look at that if you see the back versus the front I want you to remember that God's plan is like that tapestry it often appears chaotic and frustrating like the back side but he is he is weaving together a large narrative for you and it's like the front side that's his narrative it ultimately reflects his beauty, his purpose, and it reflects his hope. So to you who hear me today, I want you to remember and believe that God will deliver you. If there's somebody in this place that believes it, say, God will deliver me. Bow your heads right now, and I want to speak to you today. I just want to pray for you. If there's somebody here today, I just wanted to give you hope for your future, that God will deliver you. If you're here today and you're looking for hope and purpose in your life, I want to tell you it starts with a personal relationship with the Lord. The question is, do you know Jesus in your heart? Do you know him as your personal Savior? I want to tell you today, if you haven't asked Jesus to come to your heart, I want to offer Christ to you right now. I want to let you know that he wants to save you, he wants to bless you, and he wants to deliver you from all of your sickness. He wants to deliver you from all your pain. He wants to deliver you from all your hurt today. So if there's a brother or a sister who's in this house today, as every head is bowed, as all the saints are praying, as all the saints are talking to God, we want to make sure that we offer Christ to you in this moment. If you're here today and you want to say yes to Jesus, if you want to ask him to be Lord and Savior over your heart, I want to give you the opportunity, even right now, to say yes to the Lord. If you're here today, and you want to say yes to Jesus, just raise that hand in the air. Nobody's looking up. The saints are praying right now. We're offering Christ to you. If you're here today, just raise that hand and you want to accept Christ into your life. If you're here today, you've never accepted Jesus into your life. 
but today you'd like to do it, just raise that hand high if you're here today. I assume if there is no hand raised, that means that everyone here today has said yes to the Lord and yes to his way. I'm thankful to you who are here today. There's somebody here today. Maybe you need a church home. I want to offer Christ to you and offer his church to you. You need a church home, a place of feeding, a place where you can be blessed, a place where God can help you, where you have other believers around you. If you don't have a church home, just raise that hand today. If you're here today, you don't have a church home, raise that hand high today. Just raise that hand all across the building today if you're here today. Yes, we offer Christ to you. If you're here today, maybe you need special prayer even right now. We offer Christ to you in this place. And we believe that he wants to save you in this moment. Now maybe you didn't want to raise that hand today. I want to offer Christ. I want to ask you to do me a favor. Fill out that card in the pew or also go to the connect desk. And we want you to let us know that you want to accept Christ into your life. And we'll share with you the next steps. We want to bring you in. And we want to show you the love that Jesus Christ wants to give into your life. But right before we close, this is Survivor Sunday. I want to ask if, the, if there's anybody here today that has dealt with cancer. We are believing that God can heal. Maybe it was in your body or maybe you're a caretaker of someone with cancer. Maybe someone in your life has passed away and has succumbed to cancer. I want you to do me a quick favor and just come to this altar right now. I just want to pray some strength into your life. If cancer has affected your life or somebody in your family, I want you to just walk to this altar, even right now. I just want to take this time to pray for you, to pray over you, and to pray continued healing, maybe over the loss, or continued healing over your body. We believe today that miracles happen every single day. And we believe that God wants to do a miracle in your life today. Yes, we offer Christ. Come on, let's sing that together as people are coming forward. Yes. Oh my. Yes, he will give you. Yes. Yes. Abundantly. Heavenly Father, we bow our heads today. We believe, God, that you have overcome the world. So we come to you, Father, with a humble heart, lifting up our brothers and our sisters that are here today at the altar who have been affected by cancer in some shape or form. We know that you are our creator. We know that you're a healer. And we know that you're a comforter. We ask right now, God, for your divine intervention. And we ask for your divine peace peace that passes all understanding. We pray right now that you would surround them with your loving presence. Grant them strength and peace and grant them understanding. May they feel the comfort of your hand even on today. Father, let them know that they are not alone in the fight, that they are not alone even in the battle. Feel their heart, their mind, their body, and their soul. Fill it with hope and fill it with courage. Remind them of your promises Remind them of your power that comes with their faith. Strengthen their faith even right now. Father, today in the name of Jesus, as I speak this word, I speak healing in this place. Be it physical, be it mental, I speak healing even right now. Touch every cell, touch every tissue, touch every organ in their body. Restore them right now to full health. Guide the doctors, guide the medical teams. Guide their family members right now. Guide those that they care for and guide those that care for them. Give them wisdom and discernment in every decision that they make. Father, today as we're gathered at this altar, we ask for your emotional strength. We ask for steadfastness fastness during the tough times that can come ahead. May, us find, may we find comfort, God, in knowing this, in knowing that our struggles are seen and our struggles are understood by you. Surround us, Father, with friends and surround us with family, even today. For, surround your people, God, with support, encouragement, and surround them in love. 
Father, here at the altar, we lay it down. We leave it at the altar. We sit it right there. And so, Father, as we rise back up, as we head to our seats, as we leave this place, God, we leave, God, with a sense of expectancy in our heart that it's already been done. A sense of expectancy in our heart that it's already been healed. By your stripes, we have been healed today. So, Father, we give you the honor. We give you the praise. We worship you at the altar today. We love you. We bless your name. And we fight right now. In the name of Jesus, we believe that we are survivors today. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. And amen. Come on, give God some praise. Encourage your neighbors and consider yourselves dismissed. God bless you. Yes, life abundantly. Oh, come.